Hi everyone and welcome to a new Angular episode. Today I'm going to discuss about HTTP Interceptor and I'm going to show you three use cases where they really shine and where they can help you get rid of boilerplate code. Angular HTTP Interceptors are a global way that allow you to capture and modify the HTTP requests of your application. Think of your application as, you know, a client Angular app and you have a backend server and you exchange requests between them. Well, the HTTP interceptor is like a man in the middle. It can help you to capture all the requests that are sent from your Angular app and then you can modify them and do stuff with them. And it also allows you to capture every response that originates from your backend server, giving you the opportunity to once again, you know, do stuff with it, uh, inspect it, intercept it um, or modify it. So it's a pretty cool you know, uh, component. And there are a couple of use cases that uh, are really, really useful. First of all, you can modify the headers of your HTTP requests. Imagine that you want to implement a GVT authentication and on each request, you want to send that bearer token. Well, the HTTP interceptor is a great way to do that because you know you can capture all the requests, get, get that token from, from an authentication service and then inject it in the header of your request. You can also you know, implement API versioning for RESTful services or every you know, aspect that has to do with the headers. Then you can handle HTTP errors in a single place. Now, when you have the HTTP client, you have the opportunity to handle errors when you subscribe to a particular you know, um, request, but you have to do that throughout your application and it kind of gets messy. Well, an HTTP interceptor allows you to handle the request in a global place. Last but not least, you can profile your requests or do telemetry with them. For example, you can intercept them and you can send them in the cloud for telemetry or for use case analysis. Other use cases that are also worth mentioning are caching and you know, maybe a global you know, spinner. To illustrate the benefits that they bring to our application, imagine that you want to treat to handle errors. So you have this HTTP client, you issue a GET request, you subscribe and do stuff with the data, and if you have an error, you handle that error. And it's pretty cool for one request, but then you'll have two requests, and then you'll have three requests, and then you have 100 requests. Handling errors in this way is not efficient. Adding bearer tokens this way is also not pretty cool. So that's why the HTTP interceptor is neat, because you have one global place in which you can do these kind of things. Let's take a look at some code, but before we do that, I want to remind you to subscribe to this channel and hit the like button if you found this video useful. For this example, I'm going to use JSON placeholder. JSON placeholder is a pretty cool fake RESTful service. So you can issue HTTP requests for a certain API and you receive some information back. It's a pretty cool, uh, you know, fake backend server for prototyping, for testing, and for building demo applications. So I highly encourage you to take a look if you don't know it already and use it whenever you need pro prototyping. Cool, I'm using it because I don't want to create the backend and the database and return some objects. I just need to illustrate some examples using some actual HTTP requests that return some data. And for that, you know, JSON placeholder is pretty, pretty amazing. Now, back to my, back to the application that we are going to, to build. Well, it's a standard Angular 8 application. I didn't do uh, almost anything to it. I just generated it using NGNU and then I modified the app component. So the first thing that I did is I added the dependency on the HTTP client and then in ng on init, I'm executing free HTTP requests to get users, posts, and comments. And again, I'm not doing anything with the data. I just want to issue those requests, you know, in order to be able to intercept them later. And if you look at our application, you know, pretty standard, nothing new, it's the Angular 8 template. And here you can see the free requests that we are actually issuing. Cool. Back to our application, let's create a global HTTP interceptor. So this is how you create an HTTP interceptor. Just create a standard TypeScript class. And then there are two things that you need to do to it. First of all, you need to add the at injectable annotation. Then you need to make this class implement the HTTP interceptor interface. And this interface provides you with the intercept method. The intercept method 
receives the request as a parameter and a handler for passing the request down to the processing pipelines. There are three things that I want to implement using the, this HTTP interceptor. The first one is the header modification because header modification is pretty cool when you want to add authorization or when you want to add RESTful API versioning in the HTTP header. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to add in this little snippet of code that I have prepared. So the request that you receive in the intercept method is immutable, so we cannot touch it. However, we can clone that request and modify it, you know, the cloned version. So in here, I'm, I have a bearer token, which is hard coded. Normally you would get this from an authentication service. I'm cloning the actual request and then I'm setting, I'm setting the authorization header. So bearer and then my token. Now I have this new request and with it, I'm passing it to the next handler, you know, and allow it to go through the processing pipeline. So I did my thing and now I'm passing it to the next handler. This is the essence of the HTTP interceptor. This is how you use them, you know, in real life. So it, it, it's nothing very fancy over here. Now, before we can use them, we also need to provide them in our application. So we need to find a module. In my case, I'm going to provide them in the app module. I want to provide, you know, I have a provider for HTTP interceptors, a standard Angular provider, and I want to use my own interceptor in here. Of course, this is a multi-provider, so we cannot change that, but this is how you register your custom HTTP interceptor or interceptors, because you can have more interceptors than just one. So. We, we did that and now our interceptor has been you know injected in the application pipeline so i'm going to issue an ng serve command again and we'll go back to our application and see the outcome normally we should see that bearer token for each request we go back to our application and now we can see that our requests have this authorization header we have bearer and the hard-coded token which is exactly what we expected Cool. Let's go back to our code. Now let's try to add an error handler, a global error handler in our interceptor. So right here we have, we have, you know, the next handler, we handle our request and now we can pipe into this, you know, uh, transformation pipeline. So we can say something like this. So we can add in the pipe, you know, method. Let me just clean up things a little bit. So right here, before we handle this request, we can provide you know a pipe, a processing pipe, um, in which the request you know will will flow. So we can do things like this. Uh, if our request fails, we can have a retry count, a global retry count for each failed request. And then, if you want to handle errors, we have this catch error uh, you know method over here, and we have the error as an HTTP error response. And for example, we can do stuff with it. In our case, I'm just going to, you know, alert that error to the user, but you can log it, you can send it for analysis, uh, you can notify the administrator or whatever you want. So it's a pretty cool place to catch all the errors from your HTTP requests and to also provide a retry mechanism, you know, for a particular number of times. Let's go to our app component and let's try to break this request. So, I'm going to change it so that it's no longer valid. I'm going to save the modifications. I'll go back here and we should see that, you know, alert pop up over here. See, so we have an error. So, which is saying that, um, you know, we cannot uh, receive data from this request. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. And you can also see that we have the retry mechanism working because this request was issued you know um, multiple times after the failure and that's exactly what we needed and last but not least let's say that i want to let's say that we want to profile or provide tracing for all of our requests maybe you want to scan the use cases of an application or maybe you want to add telemetry and analyze it later on well, the HTTP interceptor is also a good place to do that. We can have, for example, this finalize block over here, which intercepts every request, regardless if it succeeds or fails. So if you issue requests, they might succeed or they might fail, doesn't matter. But in the end, 
all of those requests will end up in here. So this is a pretty cool place to write profiling, uh, tracing and monitoring of your requests. We can now see these requests being traced to the console over here. So our global interceptor, you know, worked. Cool. Now, these are the three most frequent use cases for HTTP interceptors that, you know, I have used in my applications. Like I told you, you can do many more things with an HTTP interceptor, but, you know, um, I wanted to share with you the ones that I think are the most important. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and write amazing code. Before we close, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills. Just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button. Also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at RomanianCoder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com. Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.